Hi, I'm Andrew and this is part three of the series on reprojecting GPS tracking data into local coordinate systems. Now that we've covered all the theory behind reprojection, I'm going to take a look at how that's exposed to the user in general purpose reprojection software. Now the question I'm going to come back to at the end of this presentation is do these tools make the task as efficient as possible for the user? And in particular, what if the user isn't a professional surveyor or engineer? What if they're a sports performance analysis for their local sub elite team and all they want to do is compare GPS traces from different sporting matches without having to worry about all this stuff about whether we should model the earth as an ellipsoid or a sphere or a plane. So in this presentation I'm going to look at a number of tools. Um, the most complete tool is QGIS, uh, where GIS stands for Geographic Information System. It's uh, free and open source software. The commercial equivalent would be something like Esri ArcGIS. After I've looked at this tool, I'm going to go through a couple of other tools that make parts of this procedure slightly simpler. So what we're going to talk about is first how we obtain the reference point, which will be the center of our sports stadium. How we obtain the reference angle, so we'll want to reproject our coordinate system so everything's facing the goals, so we can compare between different fields that are orientated different ways. Thirdly, how we can express this to the tool as a local coordinate reference system so that the tool understands what we want to do with our reference point and azimuth angles. And finally, how we use the tool to bulk reproject our GPS traces into that local coordinate system that we've defined. So obtaining the reference point is fairly straightforward. I've added a Google Maps satellite image background layer and then regardless of what your tool you use in QGIS, I can just click on the point and expect, inspect its coordinates. Even in something like uh, Google Maps, you can click a map and it will tell you the coordinates of that point. Pretty straightforward. Obtaining the angle to the goals you'd think would be simple, um, but surprisingly in QGIS and a lot of other tools, this is something that's not supported all that well. Um, in Software for everyday users like Google Maps, there isn't actually a feature for obtaining the angles at all. Um, even in QGIS, its only default angle measurement tool is between two lines. Uh, so we'd have to go from the start point to the end point and then draw a second line in our horizontal direction to say what we measure it from, um, which is a bit of a pain. So what I've done instead is added a second endpoint and then we draw a line from our reference point to that endpoint and then we can use trig to measure the angle of the line. A bit of a subtlety here is in the Google Maps background layer that I've used there. They use the so-called Web Mercator projection and Mercator projections are meant to preserve angles. However, unfortunately, the Web Mercator projection that Google Maps used, um, they've tried to simplify the calculations to make things a little bit more efficient by using a model for a spherical Earth rather than an ellipsoid Earth. Um, and as a result, the angle measurement you get is slightly off to the true angle measurement that you can see there for the WGS84 World Mercator. Um, so the difference is subtle, but it's worth being aware of that just because a projection looks right, it can have these very subtle problems which can cause the calculations to be slightly off. If you're interested, there's a reference down there 
by an article by the US National Geospatial Intelligence Agency where they basically trash this web mercator projection that's used by all the major web maps because of the inconsistencies it brings in when you try and use it with WGS84 which formally should be on an ellipsoid model and they basically reject its use throughout their agency because it can be dangerous for anything safety critical. The third step, which I think you'll agree is not very user friendly, is to try and describe that local coordinate system to QGIS. To do this, we have to write our own projection string. And I've copied this string from uh, the Geographic Information Systems Stack Exchange site. This tells it to use the oblique Mercator projection, which is one of the projections we discussed in the last presentation. And I've substituted in there the latitude and longitude of the point that we measured, as well as the reference angle that we want to use as direction at the top of the map. Once we've finally done that, Actually, reprojecting the GPS data to that coordinate system we have defined is fairly straightforward. It becomes as simple as right click, save as, and then QGIS can take care of reprojecting to our coordinate system once we've defined it. Internally, it uses the library Proj4, uh, which is an open source library for performing these kinds of projections on Unix systems. The second tool I want to discuss is a commercial one which makes part of that process slightly simpler. This is uh, Novatel GraphNav which um, is software for surveyors performing differential GPS measurements. Now it looks like they've actually managed to simplify specifying that local coordinate system a lot um, because they've just got the bare essentials here, the latitude, the longitude, optionally the height, and you can either enter that rotation angle yourself or because as you saw before it can be difficult to calculate that reference angle, instead we can provide a second point and then the software will calculate the reference angle from the origin to that second point for us and use that as our direction that becomes up on the map. And the final tool I would like to discuss is um, Projection Wizard, which is more of a research tool. This isn't fully developed. Which makes that process of defining the projection a lot easier because rather than making us write the projection ourselves it allows the user to sort of graphically drag a box around the area that they're interested in and then it automatically suggests a projection for us. Um, unlike the other tool, the Novatel GraphNav that forced us to use um, the local coordinate frame method um, calculated using rotation matrices. This tool uh, suggests uh, real cardiographical projections um, and in particular it follows the guidelines by John P. Snyder who was a very famous map maker. Unfortunately this tool doesn't seem to have any way to rotate that bounding box um, so it doesn't fully parameterize any of the oblique projections which would be ideal for our football stadium example where we have different stadiums rotated different ways. So in conclusion you can see although QGIS does offer all the functionality we need a lot of those steps were quite problematic and would be a bit of a burden to someone who doesn't do this kind of work on a regular basis. We saw Novatel GraphNav did 
did make uh, part of that process, defining the local coordinate system, a lot easier, but it still needs to be used um, as part of a pipeline. So, for example, there was no easy way to enter those latitudes and longitudes of the reference point. You'd have to get those from some other tool and then manually copy and paste them into the fields. So there's a bit of an integration problem here. Similarly, um, Projection Wizard looks quite promising um, as a user-friendly way to create projections. Unlike QGIS and no Novatel, where you have to download software that's usually quite large and intended for professional surveyors and engineers. With Projection Wizard, it's just a simple web interface where someone can easily draw their bounding box and then it will suggest the projections for them. But um, it's still not fully integrated. At the end, all it does is produces that projection string and then the user has to manually copy and paste that into some other tool to do the final bulk reprojection. So I think a lot of the elements are here, but in terms of does it make the task as easy as possible, uh, I would say no. There's um, an opportunity to streamline this process a lot better. In terms of supporting someone who's not a professional engineer or surveyor, Projection Wizard looks quite promising, but unfortunately at the moment it's just a research tool which is missing a lot of functionality. So there's an opportunity to build upon the principles introduced by Projection Wizard to better suit it to our purpose of reprojecting GPS data. For example, if the user were able to upload their GPS data into that system, and then let the tool reproject it for them without them having to manually copy and paste those projection strings everywhere, and to extend their system so that the user can also define the angles of their fields.